We moved to an area about a half a mile from where we were earlier. We're still near the Sanford Airport. Uh, in fact, it's just to our north, extremely close to us. Mostly mobile homes back here, and you can see some of the damage that happened to these mobile homes. Now, through the morning, we've been giving you some, some positive news about people who have managed to just barely escape and uh, incredible stories about how people somehow survived this storm. Well, in this case, in this neighborhood, the news isn't so good. Four people in this neighborhood right here alone confirmed dead. We were out a little while ago as the uh, uh, crews, the rescue crews, came out of the swampy area that's uh, adjacent to this and uh, were bringing out the body of a little girl uh, about eight years, eight or ten years old who was found out in the swamp. She'd been literally sucked right out of her trailer. She and her father are now both confirmed dead. She has a brother that's about the same age and rescue crews are still looking for him, hoping for good news, but frankly, not a lot of optimism right now. Seminole, Volusia, and Brevard County suffered more than $14 million in damages, with 14 people losing their lives. Witnesses say the tornado seemingly skipped over houses, destroying some, but leaving others virtually untouched. And though unaffected by the storm, some people still felt the pain of losing their most cherished possessions. A storm like this can also leave heartbreaking stories in its path, and this one has, like that of Steve Malloy and his two children. Sarah and Travis were the shining center of his life. When the twister hit, it sucked them out of their beds, killing all three. Debbie Anderson is the children's mother. Today, she witnessed the horror of the storm for the first time. <laughs> they were beautiful. They were perfect. <laughs> they were perfect, kids. Now they're gone. My babies are gone. There is now a total of 12 dead blamed on the tornado, including two people who live right next door to the Malloys in Seminole County. The one word I would use to describe the devastation I saw would be unbelievable because I'm from Florida and most Floridians deal with bad weather every day, especially during the summer. We always hear warnings and watches and we don't always pay attention and we don't expect it to end up like this. So to actually walk around this kind of devastation and to see it in our own area was really unbelievable. It was hard to make sense of this disaster, but now people had to accept their losses and start picking up the pieces of their lives. In seconds, what was once called home became remnants of a not-so-distant past. President Clinton declared Central Florida a disaster area and personally inspected the devastation. The thoughts and prayers of the American people are with you. Uh, in the book of Isaiah in the Bible, there is this chapter. I'd like to read it to you. The bricks are falling down but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. We want to see you do that, brick by brick, home by home, street by street. You can do it, and we want to be there to help. God bless you. While the president promised his support, locally hundreds of people and organizations wanted to donate their time, money, and services to help the tornado victims. It's not going to be some immediate uh, response and that's it. We're going to uh, stay with these folks and their need as long as the need exists. Now in times of tragedy, it is comforting to see how people pull together to help those in need. And here in Central Florida, the outpouring of support for tornado victims has simply been amazing. Red Cross officials say they cannot believe the number of people who want to step forward and volunteer. Six News Nightbeat reporter Lisa Calagrassi is live now at the American Red Cross headquarters. Lisa? We know, David, Red Cross officials say they are so pleased with the number of people who are donating their time to help these storm victims. So far, 200 new volunteers have come forward. And with the extent of the storm damage, they're going to need every single one of them. Do we know what county? These rookie American Red Cross volunteers are going through a crash course in how to help victims of the deadly tornadoes. After training, they are sent out to the hardest hit areas to hand out food, clothing, and support. As soon as the storm hit, the volunteers started showing up. They've just been coming in in droves. Last night, we were teaching classes in our lobby um, because we just didn't have room anywhere else to teach classes and train volunteers. I didn't see it as, oh my gosh, it's going to be hectic to get this work done. I saw it as, wow, look at the response. Pretty much the phone lines are down all over the place. Um, 
And if they're not, then people trying to get in and out long distance is tying up the lines too. Mary Ann DeSormier came down this morning and was put to work right away. A lot of people calling just for vo to volunteer, and then there's a lot of people calling looking for people. And that's kind of hard. The desire to help has even trickled down to the younger generation. Well, I answer phone calls, I sort things, and I do a bunch of different stuff, like run errands for people and stuff and find people in here. Tragedy has pulled Central Floridians together. In addition to a surge in new volunteers, the Red Cross has collected enough household items to fill four tractor trailers. Now, Red Cross officials are very grateful for all the donations that have been made, but they almost have too many. They have so many, they're worried that some of them might get damaged and don't have room to store all of it. What they do need is cash donations. They estimate the relief effort will cost about a half million dollars. And a lot of people, even yesterday, were coming in with cash donations. They, have, have, they received about $20,000 yesterday. It's just people coming to the Red Cross office just to give money. They need more cash donations, but you can see some very dedicated people who are going to be here throughout the night answering phones and trying to help storm victims, but certainly they need cash donations, and if you can make a donation, they would certainly appreciate it. Live in Orlando, Lisa Calabrasi, WKMG 6 News, Nightbeat.